Hello, everyone. Uh, let's talk about asynchronous processing. Uh, today, I want to go a bit more technical than the previous technical. Uh, not really. Alex had technical one. <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to build up upon that and the presentation on Carson as well. It will be related to all these things. Uh, I'm going to have a case study on a client and a problem that we had last year and how we speed up our data processing pipelines by 10 times even. And I'm going to share you what kind of price did we have to actually pay for it in complexity in particular. Before we go too deep, I would like to introduce myself because many of you don't know me. Uh, my name is Egidius Lokauskas. I'm a lead software engineer and a team lead in NFQ Lithuania. I started my journey in web development back in 2005, I think. Back when the PHP 4.3 was the next best and shiny thing and it was amazing, and now it's not. Um, but yeah, I'm with NFQ since 2014 myself, and I'm a backend developer, mainly. Uh, I love Symfony, I work with Symfony. Uh, I love other languages like Python and Java. Uh, cloud is awesome, AWS is nice for me, uh, but I'm mainly backend developer. When I need something for front-end, RackJS is my poison. So we are like two major types of data processing, synchronous and asynchronous. You actually hear about them a lot, probably. And we are very simple concepts in theory. Uh, synchronous is when you go from one task for another in series. And asynchronous, you just execute multiple tasks uh, at the same time. Uh, let's dig into a case study itself. So we started working with an e-commerce platform, which was actually a composable one, the one that Kurt, kinda, the one that Karsten uh, showed you. We still used the same PIM solution e-commerce platform, ERP software, these are separate ser uh, services, and we use RabbitMQ and a messaging component b built by a team with Alexander that we uh, saw today. Sorry, but a bit delay is throwing me off. <laughs> um, so the key things uh, to know about this uh, case study is the system is 200,000 products. So it's not a small one. It was an offline retailer back in Lithuania. He had no e-commerce platforms back in the day. And when the COVID hit, uh, they needed to go online during the lockdown. So we just used the composable e-commerce thingy and we launched the project in a week. So the system was live, the client was avoided going bankrupt during the lockdown, and everyone is happy. Today, I'm going to talk about one particular task that we will focus on. It's updating product data from provider, from ERP system in this case, as you see. The process used to be very simple when we launched it. It was like simple, synchronous, one thing after another. We fetch products, we create the object data model, apply business rules, download images, save that in database, and then we still need to re-index that in Elasticsearch so the products are available on catalog and search engine. And we need to complete these four last parts for every single product. It's relatively simpler. I think many of you have done it before. Oh. Now let's do some math. That's the best thing what we as developers want to do, is counting milliseconds, like business guys do on money, we do on performance. So this simple chain is like have five parts, each of them are different. 
fetching products from API, that's a half a second. Creating object, business logic, simple, 20 milliseconds. Downloading images, well, that's a big one. Because we go through a network, we have a delays, we have all kinds of things, 10, 15 product images for every single product. It just takes five seconds, just for approximation. When we store in database, simple flush, easy. And elastic reindexing, that's mediocre, 100 milliseconds. But let's say we have 100 products to process at the time. It all will add up to half a million milliseconds, and in human readable thing, it's eight and a half minutes. That's a lot, just for 100 pro products. And like I mentioned, we have 200,000 products. And where's our problem? This process from start to finish took 18 hours to complete. That's something that business couldn't afford because the data that the product would have is price, stock, and all this is crucial for sales process in an online environment. And these values changes all the time after the offline shops opened up and the stock had to be synced between all of these systems. Another annoying thing is if something went wrong for one single product, the process crashed and we need to restart. Once we had an issue, when the process starts 15 hours in, and we restarted for 18 hours more. That was unbearable, so it was like a natural choice. We need to fix this. We can't live with that anymore. Let's deal with it. So we looked naturally into asynchronicity, and we changed our process a bit. With still four major parts that we saw before for a product line, and one to fetch the products from the API. API appear, um, unfortunately isn't built by us. We just are using it, and it can only fetch all the products at once. So we get 200 product data. We divide that to 200,000 messages, as showed you before by Alexander in his presentation. And we just leave that to work uh, in a background process. Each of these messages are now distributed to a separate uh, worker and have their own life cycle at this point. So and when the worker hits, we just create object, store that in database, and even more, from a, that pipeline, we take two biggest offenders in time, downloading in images and indexing a lasting search. These are also a separate message and sent to background. Since we can't live actually with products without images, this is not a valid object anymore in our data model, we just have a placeholder image for a while until the actual images are downloaded for now. And once we add these milliseconds that you can see, I did the math for you, it's just 11 seconds. A little bit more, but huge improvement. Eight and a half minutes, gone. Now it's acceptable for 100 products. And to, after that, we just have less than three hours. So it's six times faster to complete the process. Loving it. Easy, easy money, let's say. And another beautiful thing is, now that we decouple processes and the messages uh, for each of our individual product, if something goes wrong, we just retry one single product in that pipeline, and hopefully it's fixed. If not, we go to dead lettering queue and retry or fix the process, the actual problem, what causes the issue for that product. And the process itself became more robust. It works nicely, it's easy to maintain, it separated some concerns, processes are more decoupled in, in, on that, and it all just helps us. So how, this is a schema how it actually looked in the end. We have two systems, 
product information management, and e-commerce. So product information management system just takes the first thing, gets the data from ERP, sends that to RabbitMQ, our transport of choice, <laughs> because database would be a bit too much for this scale. And we have multiple workers uh, processing data, updating business rules, enriching product data in, on PIM side. And once that is done, we send these messages to e-commerce. So it can do its own thing with special pricing, loyalty cards, and whatever. And these are processes that run in parallel. So that's what allows us to speed up the processing of each of the product. Before that, the line was streamlined, one process running all the time. So, it didn't look complicated, doesn't it? Oh, but it was. So, when you're dealing with messaging, messages are not always delivered in order. And you, you need to take that into account when you're working. So we had to implement versions, uh, version checks for each of our product. So we do not override newer data with older messages, and we just lose them. Also, messages can be delivered more than once in some certain messaging transports and configurations. And it can le lead to a funky behavior. Uh, really one, uh, if you're updating the same prod product in two different places. So for that, we used another Symfony component, uh, Symfony lock component, which allow us to lock the operations for a product, and no other process can do op any operations until the lock is released. Uh, other frameworks and other languages have similar components, so just look it up and use them. Also, before, we were able to track the progress of a process. We knew, like, we are now 90,227 products in, and there's that much left to do. And we kind of calculate how long it will take. And messaging queues look a bit similar to me than uh, motorbike traffic here in Vietnam. We just go all, all over the road. Some, someone is faster, someone is slower, and you get some weird behavior that looks weird, but it works. So, but to understand where we are at the time, how many scooters passed and where the one batch starts, another ends, we had to implement a separate service that does nothing else but tracks the progress of each of the import process. Yeah, another thing, I touched it a little, uh, that the data is not always here. Like, we download images in a background, and the product could not live, let's say, without these images uh, before. So we had to alter the model, data model, and application logic so the product can live without actual images and have a temporary ones in between. Also, some other data could be late as well, so, like, product not being in Elasticsearch could be an issue. We had to deal with that as well. So workarounds were required to mitigate this issue. And of course, once you scale, you need to pay more money for your hardware. More processes running instead of one, we usually now run somewhere between 20 to 40 in our application currently. But that's a price you have to accept once you're in one speed, you know. Ferrari is more expensive than Lada, so this is basically the same thing. And the most annoying thing, there is always a bottleneck. In our case, currently is database cluster. It can't really accept that much I.O. operations at the time, 
and it's just bottlenecked by I.O. in database. Even if you go 100 processes at the same time, you will still just get diminishing returns in bit for that. So, to sum it up, I think it is awesome if you need just a raw speed. But to achieve that, you definitely need to think about safeguards and implement those and invest in that. And it is not a silver bullet. It will not solve all of your problems. Just delay them and will, you will be able to identify other bottlenecks that you will have to deal with later on. So that's it, what I wanted to like to talk to you briefly. And if you have any questions, raise your hand or use the Slido code. No, nothing. Come on. Even a single question. Was it so simple that you do that every single day and never encountered these problems and you know better solutions? I'm really interested to hear those from. No? Okay. Thank you very much, Ajis. Thank you, guys.